Titan Reach is a new upcoming third-person RuneScape style MMORPG that I initially covered on my channel in July 2020. Since then the game went to Kickstarter where it raised $143,000 of its 450k funding goal. Despite not hitting their Kickstarter goal, Titan Reach continued forward with private funding via their own website, raising 180k USD to date. In this video I jump back in to revisit Titan Reach to see what progress has been made with the game so far since the last time I covered it. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. Modern RuneScape, otherwise known as RuneScape 3, is finally releasing cross-platform on mobile for both Android and iOS. I've played this game on and off for years at this point and covered it numerous times on the channel. RuneScape 3 is absolutely a game I'd recommend and the cross-platform mobile release is perfect as there's some content in the game such as fishing, mining and archaeology that's fairly chill, doesn't require a lot of attention and would be perfect to level up on mobile whilst you're doing other things IRL. The great thing about RuneScape is that fundamentally it's designed for PC, so when you've finished the chill stuff on mobile, you can switch to your desktop to do the more hardcore content such as raiding, dungeons, PvP and questing. RuneScape also has content for everyone whether you're into PvP, PvE, or you're a lore nerd that loves highly engaging story driven questing. Right now there's a pre-registration event going on leading up to the mobile launch of the game, where the more players that pre-register, the better the rewards that are unlocked are for everyone. I expect the population of RuneScape to skyrocket with this mobile release, so rally your friends and click the link in the description below to pre-register for RuneScape Mobile today. Titan Reach. It's been about a year since I first covered this game, so let's see what progress has been made. New character. It seems like they've changed the art style since I last played. What's this? Character customization. Yes. The last time I covered this game, it had a very pixelated art style. This is completely different. Choice between male or female. A few different torso options. That'll do. Pants. I guess the, the shorts kind of match. Gloves. Face paint. A lot of face paint options. Bloody hell. 41 different face paints. And let's check it out. Ooh, a new loading screen. I have a feeling a lot of work has been done to this game since the last I played it. Frame rate smooth. Yeah, progress has definitely been made. I can tell that straight away. Talk to the stranger. Glad you're awake. I was getting worried there. Where am I? You washed up on the shore. Must have been quite a trip down the waterfall. Help me get some logs. I'll need five. Okay. Yeah, they've completely redone the tutorial from last time. I need to find Jack and learn how to get logs. Can I punch these bunny rabbits to death? Yes, I can. Fuck you, peaceful little bunny rabbit. Who do you think you are? Walking around the field like you own the place. Oh, the rabbit has dropped some coins. Hello, Jack. Jack's also got his mouth open by default. <laughs> he looks like he's on meth or something. So, Jack's gonna give me an axe. Thank you. Equip the axe with tab. Let's go up to a tree. Press E. And we start wood cutting. Got a little progress bar for the wood cutting. See if the trees actually disappear. The tree didn't disappear. What are these characters doing with their head? Their default position? They're like... They're like this. So I use flint on the logs. Same as RuneScape. Light the fire. Next we go find Fritz. But first let's chop a rabbit. Big damage move and chop at the same time. F you rabbit. Pretty big town over here. Is this Fritz? Yes. Hello Fritz. Go to the lake, equip the fishing rod, and we fish. So next we need to cook the fish. Cook all of these. Pretty much all typical tutorial stuff for now. Coming soon. Oh, there's no map at the moment. Equip the pickaxe. Bloody hell. Is that a pickaxe or is it a scythe? I'm not sure. Mine some rock. We got an emerald. There we go. Okay, now I can make a copper dagger. I wonder I wonder how much of the world they've finished making. It does feel a little bit empty. It could probably use a little bit more detail and stuff. I don't know if it's just this tutorial area they've got done or if there's more. We'll find out later. There's the dagger. Wait, can we actually go in the tavern? Let's find out. Oh, we can. Nice. No NPCs or functionality yet, but at least you can go inside some buildings. Get the logs, then craft them into a short bow at the workbench. Okay. I like jumping in this game. Jumping on all of the buildings and stuff. It's pretty fun. This game could probably make some fairly fun jumping puzzles. Music's putting me to sleep a little bit. Ooh. 
Apparently you can dodge with Q. Ah, I need to go kill some chickens. Where are the chickens? Mate, can you give me some directions to the chickens? Go. Let's go over here. We cleave down the chickens. We can. Big damage. Oh fuck, I'm almost dead. When things attack you, there's not much audio visual feedback. Your health just kind of goes down and you only know you're being attacked by looking at your health bar. It's not too obvious otherwise. Because I found some emerald earlier, I could actually make myself an emerald ring if I wanted. Oh, I don't have the skill for it. Come on, give me the level. Fuck. Oh, it's not, I'm gonna need to do some more mining. Bit tedious. We're gonna need a Combine this with this, and I've got myself some arrows. That was a long process to get those arrows. Can't see myself wanting to be an archer in this game. So next I need to go kill cows for cowhide. It looks like the cows have updated models. They look a lot better than the first time I played this game. Yeah, I, I'm not feeling the combat in this game at all. Part of me does feel like this game is trying too hard to be exactly the same as RuneScape. Whereas I think what's needed for a third person RuneScape is to take the core systems of the game, such as the skill system and the general idea of progression, take that, but make it in a game that has its- Fuck me, this cow's gonna kill me. Oh god, oh god, oh god. I feel like for a third person RuneScape game to work, Fuck me, it's not dead. Oh my god, I thought it was dead. As I was saying, I feel like for a third-person RuneScape game to work, you can't copy every single aspect of RuneScape because there's some things that just don't make sense for a third-person game. For example, the whole inventory management system and the 30-slot bag, it doesn't really make sense in a third-person game. For a top-down point-and-click, yes, that makes sense just fine, but for third-person, it feels really clunky. And the RNG RuneScape-style, like, attacks, I don't know about that in a third person game either. There's something about it that just doesn't feel right, like hitting a 3, 19, 10. There's no reason why the game can't just have a normal combat system. It doesn't need to have the whole attack, strength, and defense thing. I'm sure you could figure out something that fits the game a little bit better. It's also things like this, the whole like combining things in the inventory, like clicking on the flint to click on the logs in your inventory to light a fire. It's stuff like that that doesn't really just feel right in a third person game. I think the reason the whole inventory system doesn't feel like it works in this game for me is because with it being a third person game, you can't constantly have your inventory open. So you press tab to open up the inventory and give you access to the mouse. And it like, the game's kind of unplayable, your character can move, but you're just kind of clicking on stuff and then you have to press tab again to move the camera. It just doesn't really feel right. Right, so now let's go out into the world and explore. Typically what I'd do now is probably just craft myself a full set of armor and weapons, but a bit pointless to do that if the rest of the world isn't developed, so let's go explore first. I'm not too sure how much progress has been made with the world yet. In terms of points of interest, I'm only really seeing that beginner starting town. Never mind, I'm wrong, there's a building over here. So some decent progress has been made. Oh bloody hell, there's a shark out there in the ocean. This area here seems very much in development, no NPCs or anything. I'll keep exploring though, maybe we'll come across something. The thing that's inspired me to revisit Titan Reach today is partly because recently I've been thinking about making my own MMORPG. Or at the very least, that's something that I'd want to do in the future. So after thinking about the type of MMO I'd like to make, I did kind of come to the conclusion that I'd like to make something that's a cross between New World and RuneScape. Combat-wise, I'd like it to be kind of similar to New World, like very grounded, Souls-like kind of combat. But I'm sure that'd be extremely difficult to make. I'm not too sure it'd even be viable. It's something I'd have to put a lot of thought into. What's this? There's a, there's a portal here. Where has this taken me? Oh, there's a camp over here, what the hell? Bandit Raiders. Bandit Chief. It's like a little dungeon or instance encounter. Let's see how quickly I die. Come on then. I'm hitting. I am hitting. Not much, but... And I'm dead. Good fight. <laughs> I'm just kind of sliding along the floor. The guy hit me so hard, he killed me twice. Making an MMORPG cannot be easy. It's a lot of work. To be honest, I'm guessing the hardest part about making an MMO is to get it to actually run with decent FPS, having so many players in a small part of the world and not have the server crash. 
Like that, that's something I'd be completely clueless about. I'm fairly confident I could design systems, features, and make a good game on paper, but I'm not really a developer or anything, so I wouldn't have the first clue about things such as optimization and all of that crazy stuff that goes on in the back end of MMOs to make them run. Let's just climb this mountain, shall we? See how high we can go. Maybe there's treasure waiting at the top. I'm getting to the point where I can see the edge of the world. We are climbing the steepest of steep. <laughs> how far does this thing go? Come on, keep going. I'm gonna get out of the map. Surely this should be leveling my agility or something. Oh my god, we're so high I can't even see the floor anymore. Okay, this has gotta be it. Oh my god, it still goes. The endless mountain. We've almost made it. There it is. Oh my god, the mountains just keep on going. Well, this is fun. I don't know why, but I just have a feeling that maybe the dev left an easter egg here somewhere. Because why would you create all of this random canyon area if there isn't an easter egg? There's some green in the distance. Just a vast open plain of green. And so the lazy peon ran and ran and ran until he was never seen again. And we're off the map. Good fight. I'll check back in next year, I guess. So after revisiting Titan Reach for a bit, it's clear to see that this MMO still has a long way to go. And for me personally, I'm struggling to see how 180k USD is enough to finish this game. I think the idea of third person RuneScape is a good one and something nobody has been able to successfully create. However, I just think copying RuneScape 100% doesn't feel right for a third person game. If you've got any feedback, feedback or ideas for what Titan Reach should do to improve then feel free to leave a comment below as I'm sure the developer will probably read them. Shout out to Jagex for sponsoring this video and don't forget to click the link in the description below to pre-register for RuneScape 3 on mobile for some epic rewards. Social media links on screen, thanks for watching, I hope you all had a successful day and I'll see you again really soon.